and action! I'm Joe Tavate with Rugby Wrap-Up. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, USA Rugby CEO Ross Young. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by The Balanced Palette, Nutrition for Peak Performance, and The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody, Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan for Rugby Wrap-Up. And we are still talking Major League Rugby despite the fact that the dust has settled. Because while we were in San Diego, we were able to catch up with CEO Ross Young of USA Rugby on the pitch. Check this out. Ross Young, CEO of USA Rugby, you just saw what had to be a CEO's dream for promoting the game in the United States. Unbelievable, wasn't it? Full house, raucous fans, plenty of noise, plenty of entertainment, and you know, more importantly, I think what we saw on the pitch is a real testament to how far the, whole, the league's come in the last couple of years. Um, and a great advert for rugby as a whole. I was simultaneously happy and gutted because of all the players that we know on both sides of the ball, right? And I, know, I would imagine it was the same for you. You have a vested interest in a lot of these guys because you have the World Cup year coming up. But again, this has just given the, the pathway for players to just get better. You know, you talk about pathway and younger players, but, you know, people like Lou, uh, you know... Getting, Stan Phil. The, the, yeah, yeah. The, the old fella. That somebody, yeah, I mean, the part-time player. Yeah, him. Yeah. You know, I mean, Lou was awesome out there today, and you know, Shalom for the uh, for the Sea Wolves. You know, I mean, those type of guys are also leaders, and I think that you know they've also shown you know that younger generation the way forward. And uh, you know, there's the right blend. I think that there's obviously a few a few good quality foreign players as well. I've been speaking to Dean and Nick and the MLR in general about it's great just now. But uh, excuse me. Well, <laughs> That happens normally. It's, it's uh, Mexican food, but anyway. But I mean, it's fantastic for now. But you know, we need to make more opportunities. So I think everyone's committed that we transition a few of those out in the in the long term to make more space for the up and coming talent as it goes through. Vuba it's amazing. Zellers. It's amazing. It's amazing that did you notice he didn't miss a beat, later? No. That's a pros pro right there. I had the wise crack the first one, and we were pros pro. All right. So you mentioned the foreign players in the league. I'm not one of these guys that thinks this has to be an all American league for the sake of the national team because. The better players that are on the pitch, the better the, the players that are in the league are going to get because of the exposure. So I think it can only help the USA. And you did eliminate the border in Canada. Yeah, I mean, it's a North American league. Again, you know, over the last year, I've had a number of fruitful discussions with Alan Vanson and the guys at Rugby Canada about you know, cost sharing and economies of scale in certain things we do with them, with you know, coach education, etc. So... I think it's it's important that you know they're a neighbour and they're obviously a number one enemy. It's like the fifty first state. Yeah, of course it is. But having them in the league, you know, having Toronto who obviously did phenomenally well in their first season and just come up a little bit short. It's uh, yeah, and there's no problem at all with it. And you know, guys like Matthew Bastereau, you know, coming on board next year is just going to help raise the profile. It's a lot of similarities than when I was kicking around the English Premiership in the early days, the same thing. The door was open, we had a bunch of super rugby guys, I was at Harlequins, we had Zinzan Brook, who at that point was the most iconic player in the world, and you know, Sacrilege back then, right? Sacrilege yeah. back then, you know. An but, all black playing in the Premiership. Horrendous. Yeah. But did a phenomenal... Turned out all right. Did a phenomenal job, yeah. and you know, in, you know, just that you know, education of players, not just what they do on the field, but off the field, you know, making sure they're engaged with community programs, getting kids on the field, etc. You know, that happened commonplace in New Zealand, it became a little bit elitist in the early days um, in the premiership because players, you know, didn't want to get up on a Sunday morning and go to right. a junior or minis and Zinni dragged them there because that's what that's what's going to make it work moving forward. So we're getting the, the off camera 
uh, move from the producer that we're, we're running a little long, and I know i got to let you go. But i got two quick questions for you right. before you go. Um, number one, how's Team USA going to do in the World Cup? Oh, this, I, I think... Uh, what predictions are we going to get? Predictions for fodder, locker room fodder for the other teams. Because <laughs> that's, that's CEO 101, right? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Listen, they're going to compete. I'm genuinely hopeful they're going to compete. Um, let, me, let, me fra- let me rephrase this. How can we explain to people that if the U.S. doesn't get a win in this pool, that it still could be a successful World Cup? Um, yeah, good question. I, I, you know, and to me, it's about performance, engaging performance. Um, you know, last time round, the outroar outro and or uproar, outroar, outrage. Close outrage. enough. Uproar, outrage. Um, yeah. You know, against, outrage against South Africa. Yeah. You know, it's we just going to make sure that doesn't happen. If you know. Well, we after they lost to Japan and it was a Wednesday game, they're not going to lose. No, they're not going to lose. But the uh, you know, I've spoken with Gary and and Hodgie and. And the guys, and Gary's confident that they'll scare the living daylight so yeah. of at least one of those teams. Yeah. And, but it's, know, a tough, it's a tough, it's a tough task. It's the pool of death. Yeah. I mean, everyone talks about it being the pool of death, but you know, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get at least one win and touch wood, be able to upset one of the other big boys if they take us too lightly. All right, my last question for you. Now that it's done and dusted, who did you think was going to win this match today? You asked me that before, didn't you? Not on camera. Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was going to be tight. To me, you know, there have been some great performances this year. Nola kicked on. The two new franchises in in Rooney and, and Toronto obviously came came in with a bang. But you know, I think we saw the two overall best teams playing today, and I think it was always going to be tight. I think if Seattle could get enough ball and control possession, you know, I always thought they might nudge it and. Uh, you know, nearly proven wrong, and for the, all that expansive play they've been playing in the last few yeah. weeks, it was the 13-man yeah. rollover that won it for them. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations to both teams, yeah. and uh, you know, well played Seattle for retaining the shield. So, I'm going to translate, ladies and gentlemen. He did say Seattle in a tight one at the beginning of the day. So, CEO Ross Young knows his rugby, and we appreciate, except for when he lo- it comes down to the slumming of rugby wrap-up. But I appreciate you coming on. I'm overdue coming on in the studio. (laughs) Thank you, my friend, for coming on Rugby Wrap-Up. Congratulations to you with all these players getting blooded and the relationship that you have with the MLR. We'll look forward to you guys sweeping the World Cup. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you for listening. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. There you have it. Good stuff with Mr. Young. He's always accessible and pretty transparent, so that's a refreshing thing for a CEO of this entity. And on behalf of Mr. Ross Young, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up, signing off. (laughs) 